Coach, we're observing spring football, two things really jumped out. One, the increased depth that you have on both sides of the football and the enhanced speed, especially on the defensive side. Well, you know, uh, this off season, uh, December to January, was the first year I've been here where we weren't hiring coaches. We spent the whole first year getting hired myself. The next year I lost eight. And so now by the time January was over, we, were, we weren't able to bring anybody in. But this year with uh, Vic Coning coming back on defense and Matt Kubik on offense, our coordinators, we could see exactly who left in the portal, what we needed, and we were able to recruit uh, uh, much, much more for the January term uh, players that could fit our needs. And we wanted more speed on defense, and I feel like we got that. You know, we wanted some we wanted some depth on the offensive line, and we feel like we got that. And so there are still some holes to be filled because we're not too far away from another portal window that's coming open. And, and as all teams know, they're going to lose somebody they don't expect to lose, and, and they're going to go get some. So we're feeling much better, but I think – with Vic Coning being here and able to recruit towards his system, uh, Matt Kubik being able with his coaches work toward get some depth on the offensive line and a little need here or need there, I think you've got uh, really the best that we've come out of the, the, uh, the, the spring football with players on the field that we think can help us next year. You mentioned uh, Vic not being around long enough last year really have input on personnel. With the new personnel you've brought in, the emphasis has more or less become swarm the football right. and create more turnovers. Well, I think any time that you're trying to develop a successful defense, Coach Koning, he's, he's, I don't want to say he's on my side of 50, but he's been around and he's like myself, has coached a long time. And he knows what he needs to be successful with his system. And I do think at the group of five level, uh, where you can't get the biggest guys who can run, then get little guys who can run. And that's a, just a figure of speech. But we put being able to run at a premium and maybe size as a secondary factor. And so we may not look like uh, uh, a defense is supposed to look when you just stand us up or come off the bus. But uh, I think when we get on the field, we're going to do a much better job of running with the football, rallying around the football. You know, we were about last of the nation in turnovers, uh, turnovers caused uh, last year. But a lot of that is just not getting people to the ball. We didn't have some people. So those come with getting a little better people. So the biggest thing on defense, I think he's been able to recruit some people that uh, size notwithstanding uh, that could run to the football a little bit better. Jay Wright, uh, third year on your roster, second year in the system with Matt Kubik. What progress did you see him make this spring? Well, just, just taking over and managing our offense and his leadership. You know, going into last season, all the way up to the week before last, the, the first game, we kind of had uh, 1A and 1B at quarterback. He was that close to, to, to Chandler Rogers, but he, but he busted ribs versus Texas in the first game. Took about five games to get him back in the swing, and then we were so nip and tuck the rest of the season, he didn't get a whole lot of playing time. But he came back uh, with us when Chandler jumped into the portal. He came back and, and took the responsibility and took the reins, and uh, he's done a good job. Now, Hunter Herring transferred up from Louisiana Lafayette. He's a 6'4 215-pound quarterback uh, out of uh, a Wachita Christian uh, here locally. And he had some punch there. Then a freshman that we brought in, and of course Brian Garcia that we have. I think they've all added some 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 talented players there. But Chai, I think the biggest thing, it's his last year. He's he's paid his dues. He's been from school to school. He's been here three years, and I think uh, I'm very pleased with uh, the type of leadership that he has. Uh, uh, and that the work that he's done running our offense. If he's not super flashy, he gets the job done. And, and I've, had a, I've had a lot of great seasons over the years with quarterbacks uh, that know how to be a quarterback. Last season at times, the offense struggled mm -hmm. in short yard situations, especially in the red zone. You got a couple of thumpers in there now on the offensive side of the ball. Well, we thought we'd bring in some bigger backs. You know, again, uh, uh, now we had some in, in the fold. I mean, especially Bennett Galloway, who is about 215, uh, when all of our backs were about 190 or, or less. Uh, but when we lost the first two in the portal, we tried to get a little more size. Uh, we had Hunter Smith coming back, who was kind of a third or fourth back last year, 185 pounds. But we got some bigger backs in, uh, in uh, Isaiah Woolard, uh, who came out of Ole Miss about 215. Um, uh, Thad Franklin about 225 came in, uh, and they added some size to us. But at the end of the spring, they did give you a little punch, but Hunter Smith came out and had an outstanding spring. He's a very hard runner, you know, and we may have uh, – 
plans uh, and an agenda to get a bitter, bigger back in there. But when it comes to the game time, the guy that can go out there and put the ball under his arms and make something happen is the guy that's going to play. And I still believe in that, that old philosophy, if a duck can pull a truck, hit him up, and I'm going to play the best guy. When you put a ball under this guy's hands uh, 20, 30 times a game, uh, he needs to make something happen. And so we've got a good I, – I, I think we've got a good bevy, a good group of backs that all have different skill sets that bring something to the table. So we'll be big and small, fast and, and medium fast, uh, but I think we'll come, we'll come at you with our running backs. Tyrone Howell during the second half of last year really emerged as one of the top receivers in the Sun Belt Conference. But there's also some other guys around him now. He's not a one-man band. There may be some explosive plays in the passing game. Well, you need more explosive plays on offense in the running game and the passing game. I love 16-play drives, but I can coach one-play drives a lot better. I'm smart enough to coach a one-play drive, not very smart to get those 16-play drives. Uh, and that, that comes from explosive plays. And if you want to have them in the running game, you need to first have them in the passing game because of the secondary do not respect your deep passing game. You're just going to have too many people crowding the football. And so uh, we've had some receivers that have emerged. We've got some guys uh, uh, that have some explosiveness. That starts with Ty Howell, number four. You don't have to know, uh, say much, except turn on the video last year a couple of games, and you see he has uh, really, really good potential. When we got him out of the – really, at junior college, I lost him for a year to Kansas State, but I stayed on it after he jumped in the portal, and we were able to bring him back. And uh, he will be the, the, the most uh, – uh, the most uh, talented big receiver, about six foot three and a half, 205 pounds, but uh, but his really great ball skills and hand skills. Uh, but we also have some explosiveness coming back in uh, in uh, Alred Luke and uh, and uh, Bug Mortimer. Uh, I think I called his last. Day. We call him Bug. I don't. We don't even say his name, but Bug Mortimer, our our other receiver. They have great. They have they have great skills and running ability, smaller in stature. Uh, and then Darian Wiley, who's kind of back up last year, uh, is, is kind of emerging and fighting off uh, 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 one of our freshmen that's come in that's challenging him. But, I, but Dar Darian Wiley's given us a little bit of uh, potential on the outside to the other side to, to replace uh, Fred and Jackson out there from last year that graduated. But Bud Tolbert has got some speed and size who transferred in here, and we like looking at him. And some of the young guys that we have are going to give us a chance to look at them as well. Um, but I think what, we, what we've got, we've got two, two or three or four that have big play potential. Uh, four has already shown it. The other ones uh, have shown it to some degree. But I, I think, you know, obviously, you want to go out and throw and catch the football on a play-by-play on a, on a, on a -play basis. But I think we've got some guys that can take short passes and make them long return, long passes. And, and I think that's what you, what you want to do. Everybody's wanting some explosiveness uh, in, in their offense and wants to get somehow somebody can score a touchdown uh, from, from way back. And I think we, we're going to work hard again to have some of that as well. Lastly, Coach, what are your expectations heading into year three? Well, I just, I, I just like the, uh, the, the, the way we have our spring ball, our off season. I love this football team, uh, the staff. We lost a couple like you always do when you've got good coaches and there is another level salary-wise to go to. You're going to lose some good coaches, but we've got a great group that have stayed. I love the schemes that we have uh, and we're getting better at them. Uh, and I really like our team. I think I, I, I really expect us to be a, a, a better on both sides of the ball and challenge for this conference. So, you know, we've beaten about everybody on our side of the conference one time out of two. We hadn't had success against Arkansas State. And I'll take the blame for that one. But we've been able to, to, to go one and one with about everybody else. Uh, and that's where it starts. We've had winning record at home over the last two years. We didn't win any at home or away uh, when I got here. So we're, we're, we're moving toward what we want to do. I've said all along we have only one goal. That's compete for the conference championship and get to a bowl game. Winning season, go to a bowl. And that's what we expect to do. Everywhere I've gone, that's kind of been the expectation. And we've gotten there. Uh, my, my hope is that three is a charm and this is a year. But I do see us moving in that direction. And uh, if we'll do the little things and work very hard in the offseason, we have a very hard schedule like we always do at ULM. We'll play our tough conference schedule. And then as a non-conference, not only do we have Texas A&M and Ole Miss, but you throw in Army that pretty much nobody wants to play because of the style of play and the toughness of their football team. Uh, and you throw that in with Lamar and uh, – 
you've still got probably the toughest schedule in the conference, but it's a, you know, shoot, you, you love a challenge. If you, don't, if you come to ULM and don't love a challenge, you're going to the wrong place because we are, we are excited about building and taking us to a place that we haven't been as a Division I football team. You know, we have such a pride in our national championship teams, Dan Humphreys and, and Coach Collins and all the great things they've done here. But since we've gone to 1A, we've been fighting against people with maybe more resources or maybe uh, previous a success at the 1A level. And so uh, we've done a lot of things to catch up, but I'm excited about where we are this year in taking one step more close, more closely uh, to getting to that top level in the Sun Belt Conference.